Just like the iconic 1950s African-American singer and actress Dorothy Dandridge, who she'd portray in a television movie many years later, people were also immediately drawn to Halle Berry's phenomenal beauty and commanding screen presence the moment she hit the Hollywood scene. Maria Halle Berry was born August 14, 1966 in Cleveland, Ohio, into a biracial family. Her mother, Judith, was white, and her father, Jerome, African-American. Her name was legally changed to Halle Maria Berry at the age of five. Her parents selected her middle name, turned first name, from Halle's department store, which was then a local landmark in the city. Halle had very little contact with her father after he left the family when she was just four years old, but maintained a very close relationship to her mother and older sister Heidi. It was probably for the best that he left since according to Halle, her father was an alcoholic and abusive to her mother. Halle was even a witness to her mother getting kicked downstairs and hit in the head with a wine bottle. After the divorce, Halle's mother moved the family to a predominantly white community in Cleveland. There, the biracial sisters faced considerable discrimination and taunting from the neighborhood children, causing Halle to become extremely shy and introverted. By the time she reached high school, though, she'd come out of her shell considerably, becoming a cheerleader, student council president, editor of the school newspaper, and prom queen. As a teen in the 80s, Halle entered and won several beauty contests, including Miss Teen All-American 1985 and Miss Ohio USA in 1986. She just missed the Miss USA crown that year, coming in as first runner-up. After a brief period at a community college and at the suggestion of a former pageant judge, she packed up and moved to Chicago to try modeling. Within months of her arrival, things went all the way left, when a roommate skipped out, leaving her with a $1,300 rent bill. Naturally, she called her mother for help, but her mother refused to float her alone. Halle says that the experience made her realize that she had to either sink or swim. A few years later, after getting a call from a New York City talent agent, she relocated again to the Big Apple to pursue acting. Her first TV role would turn out to be on the short-lived 1989 television series Living Dolls, which was a spin-off of the hit series Who's the Boss? During a taping of the show, she lapsed into a coma, and was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. After the cancellation of Living Dolls, Hallie moved to Los Angeles. She made her big screen debut as a drug addict in Spike Lee's 1991 film, Jungle Fever. While the role was small, it got her a lot of attention. And before she knew it, other movie offers started rolling in. Her breakout film role would happen the very next year in 1992's Boomerang, alongside Eddie Murphy. You know, I'm sick and tired of men using love like it's some kind of disease you just catch. Love should have brought your ass home last night. Followed by more standout appearances in 1994's Flintstones, 1995's Losing Isaiah, and 1998's Bullworth. During this time, she also became a spokeswoman for cosmetics giant Revlon. In 1999, Halle produced and starred in the television film Introducing Dorothy Dandridge, for which she won a Primetime Emmy Award and a Golden Globe Award. Throughout the next decade, she established herself as one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood. In 2002, she won the Academy Award for Best Actress for her performance in the romantic drama Monsters Ball, becoming the first and to date only African-American woman to have won the award. Halle also took on high profile roles such as Storm in several installments of the X-Men film series, the henchwoman of a robber in the thriller Swordfish, which featured her first topless scene, Bond Girl Jinx in Die Another Day, and the title role in the much-ridiculed Catwoman. In 2007, she was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. There should be little doubt that Halle's beauty has greatly aided her rise through the ranks of the entertainment industry. She captured the number one spot on People's 50 Most Beautiful People in the World list in 2003, as well as number one on FHM's 100 Sexiest Women in the World the same year. There should also be little doubt that her beauty has helped her hook quite a number of eligible men over the years. Not all of those experiences have been positive though. Actually, far from it. Hallie dated Chicago dentist John Ronan for a couple of years in the late 80s into the early 90s. In 1993, after their relationship ended, he sued her for $80,000 in what he claimed were unpaid loans to help launch her career. She contended that the money was a gift, and a judge dismissed the case because John didn't list her as a debtor when he filed for bankruptcy the year before. According to Halle, a beating from a former abusive boyfriend during the filming of The Last Boy Scout in 1991 punctured her left eardrum and caused her to lose 80% of her hearing in that ear. She's never named the abuser, 
only saying that he was, quote, well known in Hollywood. In 2004, former boyfriend singer Christopher Williams accused actor Wesley Snipes, another former beau of Halley's, of being the perpetrator. Who knows how true that is since the motivation behind the announcement had everything to do with Christopher being tired of people assuming he was the one who put his hands on her. Halley's first walk down the aisle occurred shortly after midnight on January 1st, 1993. In the wee first minutes of the new year, in a small ceremony in their woodsy Atlanta house, she married baseball star David Justice, right fielder with the Atlanta Braves, whom she met only the year before after first spotting him on MTV participating in a celebrity baseball game. By coincidence, during a phone interview a few weeks later, a writer who was acquainted with David asked if Halley would sign a picture of herself for him since he was already a fan. Halley says she signed the autograph and put her phone number on it. She told People in 1993, People say, oh, you're too young and you have this great career, but when you find that someone special, what's too young? David added, I tell Hallie, I thank God every day for giving you to me. Sadly, they would split three years later. Following their separation, she stated publicly that she was so depressed that she'd considered taking her own life. Hallie married for the second time in 2001 to R&B singer-songwriter Eric Benet. She first met him after a 1997 concert at Los Angeles' House of Blues. This time around, things were a little different since Eric had a nine-year-old daughter who Hallie adopted. The couple's divorce was finalized four years later, after Eric underwent treatment for sex addiction. In her official statement on their split, Hallie said, Eric and I have had marital problems for some time now and have tried to work things out together. However, at this point, I feel we need time apart to reevaluate our union. We ask that you respect our privacy as we are going through this emotional time. While Eric didn't make a statement at the time, two years later, he did speak to people saying, We all know I cheated. It was out there. It's a betrayal. But I never did have sexual intercourse with anyone while I was with Hallie. Going into rehab was presented to me by her mother that in order for the marriage to have a shot, this is what you need to do. But I'm not a sex addict. I wanted to save my marriage and do anything necessary to do that. I went and heard other people's stories and realized this is really not my struggle. We did get back together after that. We tried to rediscover this groove of feeling comfortable and safe and trustworthy in the relationship. I was very much in love with my wife, but I personally could only contribute 50%. Ultimately, what was the end of us was she just couldn't trust me anymore. You can't blame her for that. The same year Hallie's divorce from Eric became final, she began dating French-Canadian model Gabriel Aubrey. They met while shooting a Versace ad in LA. Hallie gave birth to their daughter Nala in 2008. Two years after that, the couple announced that their relationship had ended. In 2011, the two became involved in a highly publicized custody battle centered primarily on Hallie's desire to move with their daughter from LA, where both her and Gabriel resided, to France, the home of Hallie's new man, French actor Olivier Martinez. Not surprisingly, Gabriel objected. The following year, a judge denied Hallie's request to move. Less than two weeks after the decision, Gabriel and Olivier engaged in a down and dirty Thanksgiving Day brawl at Hallie's residence. Both men insist the other started it. Olivier was granted a temporary emergency protective order against Gabriel. In turn, Gabriel obtained a temporary restraining order against Olivier, asserting that the fight had begun when Olivier had threatened to kill him if he didn't allow the couple to move to France. Leaked court documents included photos clearly showing that Olivier came out the victor, since Gabriel looked like someone had run over him with a motor vehicle, put it in reverse, and backed over him again. Soon after, Hallie's lawyer announced that her and Gabriel had reached an amicable custody agreement in court. In 2014, a superior court ruling called for Hallie to pay Gabriel $16,000 a month in child support. She's also expected to pay their daughter's tuition, and the two will split her healthcare expenses. The payments will continue until their daughter turns 19 or graduates from high school, whichever comes first. Hallie is also responsible to pay Gabriel a retroactive payment of $115,000 and $300,000 for his attorney fees. No matter how intense all this drama got, it didn't stop Hallie and Olivier from moving forward with their relationship. They married in France in the summer of 2013. That fall, Hallie gave birth to their son, Maceo. After two years of marriage, though, the couple announced they were divorcing. 
While the divorce was finalized fairly quickly, it took some time to sort out their issues with custody and child support. That didn't happen until the summer of 2023. In addition to the joint custody ruling, Hallie also agreed to pay Olivier $8,000 a month in child support. She will also pay him 4.3% of any income she receives above $2 million in additional support, as well as their son's private school tuition, uniforms, school supplies, and any extracurricular activities. Hallie was off the market again by 2020 when she started dating musician Van Hunt. As of the making of this video, they appear to still be going strong. In a 2021 Valentine's Day post on her Instagram, Hallie gushed about her boyfriend. No matter what they say or what they call you, no matter how many times you try, it's always worth it. If you desire love, you will find your match, your equal, your person, even if it takes you until you're 54.